Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. Uh, dear Chairman, Professor Koch, it's my pleasure to be here. It's my third visit to, to begin, uh, begin to the Great Wall Congress. Uh, so uh, my topic, uh, in primary prevention of diabetes mellitus in cardiac health, uh, it's one of the main topics of my research. Uh, I am professor of National Research Center for Preventive Cardiology in Moscow. This is the historical, located in historical city center. So, uh, diabetes is a global epidemic for worldwide. About six, eight percent of adult population of the world uh, is diagnosed with diabetes mellitus. Uh, firstly, this is a type type two. About ninety percent of all diabetes mellitus is a type two uh, mellitus. And you can see this is a, a worldwide map. And here uh, uh, we can um, prognosis of increase of diabetes mellitus in Latin America, in Africa, and in Asia. China's, uh, China's, uh, China is the number one country for the increase of diabetes mellitus. Um, in near 10 to uh, 20 years, it will be uh, increase of the diabetes mellitus about 80% in China. So, causes of death uh, in type two, um, uh, two diabetes uh, patients is the first is a myocardial infarction, about 55 percent, uh, uh, and the second is a stroke, about 29 percent. And uh, you can see this is a prospective study, not this health study, is a cardiovascular risk on different diabetes stage, not only diabetes mellitus uh, associated with increase of cardiovascular risk. But pre-diabetes, uh, uh, pre-diabetes uh, period, uh, this independent risk of uh, cardiovascular uh, disease too. You can see here um, increase uh, mm, of cardiovascular risk uh, in compared with uh, patients with without diabetes. So um, diabetes is um, uh, another uh, chronic uh, non-infection disease. Have this uh, continuum. This is a um, uh, disease for 15, 20 years. And this is slowly developing, this is, um, all this process uh, frames as a diabetes mellitus. Firstly, it's an increase of insulin resistance, um, increase of secretion of insulin, insulin and uh, also this um, um, uh, synthesis of glucose in liver. And after we, you can see, this is a uh, development of diabetes mellitus. So, uh, pre-diabetes, uh, it is annual conversion of AGT, to pre-diabetes to uh, t uh, type 2 diabetes. This uh, change, uh, this depend of the population, is average about 4, 5 percent. So, uh, previous speaker say about metabolic syndrome, and uh, I would like to present two, this pre-diabetes and diabetes, uh, this is one of the component of metabolic syndrome too. This is a ribbon, you see this is a ribbon. Uh, he describes this metabolic syndrome in his uh, Bantek lecture. Whether cardiologists should conduct primary prevention of diabetes or not? Yes, we have some arguments. First, there's a prevalence of uh, prediabetes in the patients with cardiovascular disease. It's a, a famous Yevra Heart Survey. It's a multi-center um, st um, study. It includes this, uh, 110 centers in 25 countries. The prevalence of hyperglycemia among patients with acute coronary syndrome. You can see only 35% have normal glycemia. Other part have different type of the uh, hyperglycemia. Is a prediabetes, red is a um, prediabetes. Uh, uh, diabetes about 25%. And um, prediabetes is um, um, impaired fasting glucose and impaired glucose tolerance is about 40%. Second, um, uh, impact uh, of fasting glucose and two uh, hour after tolerance glucose test on risk of cardiovascular death. And you can see after load glucose is independent risk factors for coronary risk. This increase about 32%. Fasting glucose uh, independent uh, risk factor too, but the after load glu uh, glu uh, glucose lo uh, level is a two time more in um, uh, development of cardiovascular disease. is a, a main document for us, for, uh, for example, for Europe and for Russia, 
maybe this in uh, Asia is adapted. This is some uh, uh, topic of the European guidelines. It's guidelines on diabetes, prediabetes, and cardiovascular disease. So this is the main topic of the uh, pre for the, uh, the, the uh, prediabetes. Assessment of predicted type 2 diabetes risk should be part of the routine health care using the risk assessment tool available. You can see this class of recommendation very high and level evidence B. Patients without known diabetes uh, will be established coronary uh, vascular disease should be investigation on oral glucose tolerance tests because about 60% of patients don't know about diabetes. People at a high risk of the type 2 diabetes should receive um, some uh, lifestyle change and if need and uh, sometimes uh, we must uh, use pharmaceutical therapy to reduce of the delay of the risk of development of diabetes. This is the level of evidence and class of recommendation high. So um, screening approach. We have three type uh, screening. Population screening, selective screening and opportunistic uh, screening. So it's uh, our uh, own study. This is a pre epidemiological study in one of the city of Russia, this is the Volga district. You can see prevalence all main risk factors in our Russian adult population. It's about 2,000 men, includes is, a, is not cohort, this is an epidemiological study. And you can see arterial hypertension uh, prevalence about 30%, total cholesterol, high, hypercholesterolemia 55%, Triglyceride increased 25%, LDL cholesterol increased 36%, obesity about uh, 20%, and uh, the last um, uh, prediabetes, two type uh, pre 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 prediabetes, uh, um, impaired fasting glucose and postprandial hyperglycemia, and totally is 8%. 8% 8 of adult population have um, prediabetes. So second argument, for a uh, high um, uh, selective uh, selective screening. This is a carbohydrate metabolism in the patients with arterial hypertension. First, third stage. You can see just um, uh, normal, uh, normal, uh, normal glycemia, we defined just 40% cases of patients with arterial hypertension. Other parts have this different, uh, different prediabetes or new diagnosis type to, um, uh, to diabetes and type to uh, diabetes. About 4% this type 2 diabetes. New diagnosis type 2 uh, diabetes about 12%. Uh, and prediabetes about 33%. And the very good, very easy tool for prognosis of uh, uh, diabetes risk is a Finnish diabetes risk score, Fin risk. We uh, uh, um, uh, wide use uh, this uh, tool for screening of our uh, patients with a different cardiovascular disease. Just seven, uh, eight uh, question for determinant of the prognosis of diabetes mellitus risk. This uh, depends on the uh, low, moderate, high, and very high risk of diabetes mellitus. Also, we must um, um, use oral glucose tolerance test. And, um, and after according to the oral glucose tol tolerance test, patients is uh, divided some groups normal, impaired fasting glucose, impaired um, glucose tolerance, and type 2 diabetes. Is, uh, uh, you see this 3.0, 60 minutes, and 2 hours. Preventive strategy. We have two uh, strategies. This is a population-based strategy involving altering the life lifestyle and environmental determination of the type 2 diabetes. And the second, uh, this is a high-risk strategy applying preventive measure on individual uh, level. Type intervention, behavioral interventions is including change of diet, uh, uh, diet and increasing physical activity and or uh, uh, pharmace pharmaceutical uh, intervention. Uh, some agents for improve of glucose tolerance and insulin sensitive. And first the lifestyle, you can see this meta-analysis of the um, uh, um, studies with um, use is the lifestyle change. Is the, uh, first the uh, European cohort, Second, um, this is a um, um, Finnish, and third, this is the United States, and I think this is a China. And you can see uh, when we um, use lifestyle, we can uh, re um, reduction of relative risk of diabetes mellitus about 40, 50, 60 percent. It's possible. So diabetes risk in randomized, randomized trials uh, of antihypertensive treatment. 
Uh, this, uh, you know, this very um, popular, these trials, hope, cap, alhat, scope, life, value. And when we uh, use uh, sartans of uh, AC inhibitors, we can see also they um, in influence to risk of diabetes mellitus, the reduction of risk uh, diabetes mellitus about 13, 20 percent. So uh, in some case, we use um, antihyperglycemic agents too. For example, this metformin, acorboza, rosiglitazone, and you can see this DPP, DREAM, STOP, NEEDM, um, ACT NO, navigator sta uh, studies. And these studies um, clearly demonstrate that when we use um, uh, therapeutic doses of this, these agents, they uh, decrease or reduction of diabetes mellitus risk about 30, 50 percent. It depends which uh, uh, population and which uh, dose. We have this um, uh, my own experience for use of metformin and rosiglitazone in patients with metabolic syndrome without diabetes mellitus, pre-diabetes, with pre-diabetes. It's a three months duration um, randomized is this group, uh, selective group with uh, metabolic disorders and pre-diabetes. And one group is, uh, you receives the uh, rosiglitazone, and in after one mo uh, month, we uh, increase the uh, uh, dose of rosiglitazone and metformin. This started about 80, uh, 50, um, um, uh, 850 milligrams, and after we um, increase the uh, uh, dose of metformin, and uh, this control group. And what's the result? You can see is this result here. Fasting glucose, glucose um, after load glucose, HOMA insulin resistance index, weight, weight uh, waist uh, circumference, LDL cholesterol, triglycerides, HDL cholesterol change after this uh, antihyperglycemic agent uh, patients with prediabetes. It's not diabetes patients, it's prediabetes patients. Also, I think this uh, Professor Ko will um, describe this statin status only in patients with type 2 diabetes, but we have um, our experience those depend, depend influence of uh, statins to the glucose metabolism. You can see this atorvastatin, 10 milligram, 20 milligram, and 40 milligram, and control group. And this is six month this uh, study, and uh, you can see in uh, those de uh, the those depend um, uh, influence of atorvastatin to glucose metabolism. When we increase this dose, it um, influence to uh, to the um, glucose uh, fasting glucose uh, level, maybe this is a 10 percent, 12 percent, but the incidence we fix. Also, we can see this HOMA index insulin resistance. When we use more dose, low, uh, high dose of atorvastatin, is associated this change of insulin resistance. So uh, this is a very interesting um, study. This is a United Kingdom uh, study for um, uh, education program for uh, uh, prevention of uh, diabetes mellitus. Totally about 18% uh, 18,000 individuals from um, for, the, uh, for um, uh, medical uh, centers is included to the study and about uh, 1,000 uh, patient have screening for um, pre-diabetes mellitus and uh, they um, organize education program with annual refresher and regular telephone contact. And I would, would like to uh, describe this um, uh, conclusion. Uh, this is uh, shows the relative low resource uh, pragmatic program may lead to reduction of type two diabetes mellitus and improve biomedical and psychosocial outcomes and is a cost effects. So uh, obstacles and barriers for prevention. Three point, economic problems is a uh, need uh, some resource support Social cultural problem is a big problem, for example, for India, for China, because when uh, they have this rural lifestyle, this is a good. When this is removed to a uh, big city, urbanization, influence American lifestyle, influence to the uh, metabolic uh, status too. Lack of that technology and skills. So is my conclusions, uh, central issues for, um, in type two diabetes prevention. Type 2 diabetes prevention must be integrated in the major program addressing the prevention of other lifestyle-related disorders like the cardiovascular disease and some cancers. It's the third main medical social problem in worldwide. Primary prevention is uh, um, uh, of the essence, especially in resource-constrained uh, uh, countries. 
Diabetes prevention is an intersectoral effort regarding cooperation and coordination. It's a multidisciplinary uh, uh, problems. Diabetes prevention should be addressed within the context of health system reform and through the availability of acceptable health uh, care standards. Culturally appropriate and economically feasible investigation should be adopted. Improving uh, an acceptable uh, intervention will have negative impact. As my last uh, slide is the confusion, the man who moves the mountain begins a pick, uh, by carrying away small stones. Pre-diabetes is a target for prevention of diabetes mellitus. And it's uh, our job for cardiologists because about 60% patients with ca arterial hypertension, cardiovascular disease, have pre-diabetes. If we will diagnose it as pre-diabetes, it will be good. We will prevention um, diabetes mellitus about 50-60%. If we don't uh, prevention in the five, uh, fifth, uh, near um, five years, every second patient with arterial hypertension will be patient for endocrinologists for type 2 diabetes mellitus. Thank you very much.